I wonder what happened that you can hear me now. I don't know, but it sounded like a robot a few minutes ago. It was really strange. All right, let's see. Praise God. Is it showing that it's live? Um, yep. I have your page up. Hang on. How do I get to live? So tell me, how do we go to live? It's not live on my end. It's live over here. Just refresh. Okay. I just did. I shut it off and turned it back on. And I tagged you so I could see you. Like, I don't know if you can see this. We're live on my um. Wait, that's not it. Hold on. See right here? Look. Okay. We're on your Facebook Live. That is so are you on your your page, not in the group? No, I'm on Divine Science and the Human Body. Yep, that's it. Divine Science and the Human Body, and it comes up. Group by Charnel. Maybe you refresh? I just did. Oh, wait, wait, there we are. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Yay, there we go. Okay. Technology, when it works, is awesome. Okay. Can you hear me on there? Yes. I'm going to grab something more to drink real quick. Hold on. Why is she not talking? I can hear my phone. You got your next. Hmm? Yeah. This is the next right there. Where? Right there? <laughs> now right. we can turn my phone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. This is the next right there. Where? Right there? And make it full screen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I can turn my phone. Okay. Yeah. It's recording on there. Go ahead. You do it. Whatever you got to do. <laughs> it just looks so funny, didn't you? On the arrows right there? Yeah. Right there. There it goes. Okay. I hear a little bit of an echo. Okay. That better? Yes. All right, guys, we are about to go live here. We're going to do a little teaching. I'd love to see if anyone, any of you guys are on. Feel free to leave comments where you are located. Um, I have Pastor Deborah Schilling with me today. She's actually hosting, and this is a new technology for everybody. We're trying, we're doing new stuff here, so bear with us. The echo is because there's two pieces of time. You might have to go in another room to do the interview. Okay, let me try that. That's fine. Wolfie, come here, Wolf. Come on. Come here. Come see me. 
That is so weird, Charnel. It's re double recording. Yeah, because you're in the same room with the computer, so it's picking up the feedback. Are you in the still the same room? I can go. I'll go in another room. I'll be over there. We got Shelly Beatty's here all the way from New Zealand. Like this? Yeah. Thanks. Okay, let's try that. Close the door, Karen. All right, we'll try this. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to remember to close the door, Karen. I'm going to steal that. <laughs> yeah, that means multiple things. Okay. Awesome. Super. And we, yeah. and we both have our like superhero glasses on to match. <laughs> Mine are red. I couldn't find my brown ones. Mine so are red. blue and only because I could just find them. But I have like oh, no. five pairs of broken ones all over the house. Like missing an arm or a glass piece or whatever. But so, yes, we are at your church today. Tell us, tell us a little bit about your church and you and um what you what your purpose or accomplishment of this interview is or what you hope to get out of it for your amazing um group of people up there in michigan um well basically um we're a church here in michigan in a little town of richmond and we've been here for 10 years we've been surviving everything that's been going on around us and um I'm just excited today to hear what you have to share, Charnel. You have just been so inspirational to me and what you've been teaching on and what you've been sharing. And um, everyone here at the church is very hungry and um, they're just excited to see what God has next. What's the next chapter coming up for all of them? So we had service this morning and did worship and I spoke for a little while and and then we had lunch and then we've just been waiting to be on the interview with you. So we're super excited about today. So thank you very much. Awesome. And how long have you guys been, um, you guys have been how long in your church? How long have you been pastoring? It's been, it was 10 years here back in January. Actually, no, I'm sorry. It's 11 years this year. It was 10 years last year in January. So it's been good, it's been fun. Awesome. Well, the reason why we connected is you want to share a little bit of how we even got on the phone or where, where we actually connected from the beginning part or where do you want to go with this? How do you want to just to give a little people um, some backup story on what we're doing here? OK, well, yes, actually, I was in prayer and I was just praying about all the situation with the vaccine, with the test, with everything going on. And I had sent you that text asking you how you felt about those things and you came right back with sending me some definite strong links that really blessed my heart in the meantime i had found out that my grandson was facing an issue with cancer which we thought and went to prayer with that and you'd given me a lot of positive feedback as far as that went and he doesn't have cancer it was just scar tissue praise god so that was super good and um but in the meantime the lord just opened it up i'm still not even sure how that day happened when all of a sudden you were like, uh, are you open for a little coaching? And I was like, yes, I am open for some coaching. And you called me immediately within a few minutes. And within 40 minutes, you gave me a coaching class, which basically rocked me and it really let me know what I needed. It was very helpful. I came back and even shared a lot of the things you shared with me, the power of God inside of us, who we are, and that we cannot give in to the negativity and the things that are, we're being pulled in every direction right now. And I don't know if you've, if you followed what's going on here in Michigan, but they've got us locked down tighter than a drum here and all kinds of craziness going on around us. And I'm thankful for everyone here at the church. They are just on fire. They are moving, moving in what God wants them to move in. And it's been very good. So thank you. Yes. So, well, actually my dad is from Michigan and so we definitely follow what's going on up there and is it, it's, it's um, very draconian to me what at the level of what they're putting you guys through. And uh, it's it's scary 
to be honest, uh, not just in Michigan, but in multiple, just the whole direction. It can be scary. It's a, it's a great opportunity for all of us right now to dig in and actually take action uh, with God inside of us to, to do what's necessary and required in this moment, because we're sent here for a purpose and we were picked and we sent this time, we were sent during this time for now for a reason. And, um, we got, you know, this isn't in the Bible, but people always say, God's not going to give you more than you can take. And, um, people will, you know, play around with that, but it's actually not in the scriptures, but, and, but it does say that, um, greater things than these, that's our inheritance. That's our DNA. We have technology to not only uh, remote heal, but heal our own selves. We have this amazing God technology. And I think that um, a lot of times we forget about it, unfortunately. Um, and it's my purpose and mission to be on this planet right now to help people connect and realign with that remembrance. And uh, you know, I have a whole book on it called The Science of Miracles. And it's remembering the frequency of love, who is God. And I like the word remember because we are one body. And then we have that, this whole collective body. You know, we have all the cells in here that come to be one body. And yet we have this collective that is one body, one membership. And uh, as we align on, in, within ourselves first and remember, as in become in alignment with God and unity and divinity, um, with each cell uh, participating and um, and active to to all the things that God is inside of us, and then as we collectively move together to do those things, we are on, there's no limits. We're completely um, only forward motion with greater things than Jesus. Are you kidding me? I mean, that is Jesus did some amazing things. While he was here and he has the highest scalar waves of any human that's ever walked the planet and um, did some major, major, awesome things while he was here. So many things that they could not contain all the records of everything that he did in one book. And I actually think that there's probably tons of more information outside of the books and uh, or the book that would give us more, um, more intent and understanding of that. And that same person who was, is also a spirit. We were sent here on a mission to commission and to take dominion. Um, we're commissioned, that word commission, commissioned to be on the planet for right now, such a time as this. And then he left, uh, he, he left, he was resurrected and then he you know, ascended. And, but he didn't ascend because we have Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit is within ourselves. It's in everything that's alive, um, light, everything that's light, whether it's plant, animals, all of that. And I'm not saying worship animals. I'm not saying worship plants. I'm just saying that God is the beginning and ending of everything. And when we really get that and we get how powerful that God is in us and we are God in action, mm -hmm. then all of this other stuff is just going to go by the way, wayside because, um, there's, they have no chance. There is no they. It's only God. And, you know, but it will take action and it does take choices. And I, I don't remember if I shared with you my story about it's time to meet Will. Did I get into that explanation? No. So um, I kept having a reoccurring dream of it's to, it, angels coming saying it's time to meet Will. It's time to meet Will. I got up and I talked to my assistant at the time and I said, Am I going to a church where someone's name Will or William or um, a pastor Will or Bill or something? And nothing was on the books. And I just kept getting that. And during, during that time, I had went to go see a man named Dr. Lucky. I was teaching a Dreams and Visions course in Mississippi. And I was really sick at the time and uh, had been doing all the normal Western pharmacia, which is witchcraft and um not getting any results except for them putting on me on more meds, which gave me more side effects, which needed more meds and more side effects. So wasn't feeling any better. And they told me about this Dr. Lucky guy. When I went in to go see Dr. Lucky, which is interesting. He, he's a Pentecostal 
pastor also. Um, and he's a medical uh, physician, but he's also just like very spirit led and he's very like Tesla and energy and has like all these amazing machines and things from China and Germany and all, I mean, very, very forward thinking and how to deal with frequency and the body. And um, so he puts me on this, in, you know, this machine thing and he uh, hands me this clipboard and when he does, the machine sounds like Pac-Man just died. It was, it was a terrible, scary sound. I looked at his face. His face looked alarmed and concerned. And I said, oh, God, you know, that's not the doctor look you want to get. And I said, what's wrong? And he said, well, normally whenever I hand the clipboard to someone, they, um, they may read it. And then, or it was a paper. And they said, uh, normally they will read it. And then the machine might make a noise. But you just, like, took it in your hand. And it basically made the machine go bonkers or whatever. And I was like, well, what's on the paper? So I read the paper and the paper says like, um, I am beautiful. I am called. I am, I have destiny. I am destiny. Uh, I'm loved. Like all these really beautiful things. And I was like, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand, like, what does this mean? And he was like, well, basically your body is rejecting believing in any of these things on the paper. And I was like, no. You know, it was like, you know, and I was mortified. I was like embarrassed and hoping that he wouldn't say, what do you do for a living? Because I was like, you know, I would probably be like, I'm a tennis pro or a bowler. I don't know, make up something because I didn't want to like diss God and, you know, service and ministry and be like, you know, yeah, I'm in full-time ministry teaching this every weekend for the last 20 years. You know, it's like a little embarrassing to be a rep for Jesus. And yet you don't believe anything that you're loved or called or anything is like, this is what I teach, you know? So I, you know, he didn't ask me right away. So I got to miss that part. But basically I said, what do we do? I mean, I was mortified. I'm like, I literally teach how God is so awesome and that we're called and connected and that we could do everything. And this is 20 years ago, but, or 15 years ago, but still, I'm like, how do I fix this? You know, I'm like trying to put this in my head. Like how in the world would I not believe this? I thought I believed it. I'm teaching it. Right. But subconsciously something was going on. So he says, give me the paper. So he takes the paper and he writes something on the top and then he hands it back to me and I'm fine. Like nothing happens. And I was like, okay, so what did you do? And I look and all he wrote at the top was I will. And he said, I want you to get in front of the mirror. And I want you to read and like, look at yourself. And I want you to say, I will that I'm beautiful. I will that I'm called. I will that I'm, that I'm um, loved. I will that I'm, um, I have purpose. I will, you know, whatever. I will in front of everything. And I was like, what am I doing that for? And he, cause it sounds a little weird, but he said, um, your will is 400,000 times stronger than your spirit. And as soon as he said that, I heard it's time to meet Will. And I was like, oh my God, this is what God was trying to tell me. It was time for me to look into alignment with God's will. And even with scalar waves, we can test people on their biofield because the biofield is six to eight feet, you know, depending on, although there's some people who like Mariah Woodworth Etter, I mean, they would test her field and she would go like miles away. Like she would just, pray or whatever and people would be out slain in the spirit like miles away um in trances and crazy stuff because she was just a different being but you know different people who have healing gifts and what have you they can extend that field and like peter's shadow that's the perfect example it was what he carried in his field and we can all do this we can carry healing we can carry love we can carry light that actually we don't have to say if anyone say anything to anyone or touch anything, but it's just in our field. And going back to that, he, you know, it's time to meet Will. He was telling me right then, like, this is this is your time to come into that alignment and to remember who I am. And I know you're familiar with Bobby Connor around that time. Bobby, uh, we were doing a meeting and uh, I don't remember if it was Israel it might have been Mich Michigan, um, but he had had this dream where the enemy had come. I say the enemy. I don't like using that anymore. But um, 
that's his wording. And he had said that the, the two questions that were being asked right now were, um, number one, who, who do you think you are? And I mean, this is 15 years ago around the same time. And then he said that the Lord had said to him, no, it's who do you think you are? Oh, wow. And it's the same question, but it's just slightly, you know, a little bit of sarcasm there where it's like, who do you think you are? Like, you can't do this. You're not called. You're not whatever versus who do you think you are? And like, when we can remember, when we can remind having the mind of Christ transformed, transformation and we can ignite the Christ in us then we can ignite the biofield and because the cells what we think about what we talk about what we feel this alignment is what actually sends the code out into the field the field has a dual part it's called a biofield because it not only radiates out but it also magnetizes back in so you can only get what you are so as we really remember and align with all the things that God is and put our willpower in it and, and through it, then we can actually just walk around wherever we are and people will actually be like, I feel you. I mean, I know you've all met people that when you walked away, you were like, wow, I just love that person. Or I just got this really weird, creepy feeling about this person. Like there's like a serial killer vibe or whatever. Right. <laughs> and with, with the scalar waves, they can actually test is someone in their um, role on a scale from zero to a hundred in their role of divinity and their, and their God given purpose or, and they do a sep separate test. Are they in their personal purpose? Wow. And you can be in a separate personal purpose than your will, your will and God's spirit can be two different things. So you can score like a 15% of your personal purpose, but be an a hundred percent of your God purpose, or you can be a hundred and a hundred, meaning you're full on in your God purpose and your mission. Um, and, and you're also in your personal purpose. Like you, you know who you are and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And then I've met some people who are literally like, um, not like 5% in their divinity role. And they're like a hundred percent in their personal purpose, meaning they're really overriding what God has for them for their own personal gain or their own personal trauma life or whatever. You know, most people just act out because of their own woundings, you know, hurt people, hurt people. But so that's kind of, um, you know, where I am in this situation right now is you can listen to all the people, you know, there's tons of quote truthers out there. There's all the, all these people who are saying whatever I I've interviewed many of them from my show. And I've, I've had this whole, I just feel very, um, driven, uh, in my purpose to awaken people to remember as much as possible. But in the end, what I've been doing for really almost 20, 30 years now is, helping people to go within to know what God is saying to you, because God may be telling me to do something and then he's telling you to do something different. Hopefully, because obviously there's people who are in Africa doing work over there. And I did Africa work for a while. And then I was like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. And so when people are doing Africa work or I don't know, Asia work or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing that. Cause I don't want to do that anymore. You know, it's like, it's okay to be different. And you know, maybe some people are called to a church and maybe some people are not called to a church. Maybe people are called to a certain um, job uh, or life, you know, but just think if all of us were pastors, then who, how would any, how would Christ be re reached everywhere? You know, it's like we have, we can, we have to be everywhere and we have to be diverse. And that's what makes us all so amazing and beautiful as a body. You know, we're not all the pinky. We're not all the eye. We're all, we're a body. We're all different. We all function differently and do different things. And we may not be called to do all the same things, but having our will aligned with God's spirit is, is absolute the combination of, of, of everything. And, and so your belief system, my belief system is crucial in this time right now to actually know not only what God is saying, 
but what God is saying for you to do and for me and whoever is here to help people to remember to go back to what is God saying in here and not don't relying on anything external, but relying on the God given technology in here. That's telling us what to do. I lived through Katrina and several crazy um, scientifically engineered situations. And, you know, we didn't have cell phones. We didn't have electricity. You know, I had to know, like, my mom's okay over there or this person's okay over there. People were displaced. You know, um, we had to, you know, and I don't know what's coming, to be honest. But I do know that I want everyone to be as ready and I invite everyone to be as ready as possible in their strength and their will and their uh, being able to hear God and know what to do moment to moment to moment. It's not even like minute to minute or week to week. It's literally moment to moment to moment. And so um, I don't know if if that is kind of where you were talking about, but um, rem that yeah. whole remembering yeah. piece is huge for me um, of just helping people to to tap into literally Christ in your DNA right here. We have the technology. No, definitely. I appreciate what you're saying because that's, you know, I had shared with you, I think earlier on where I just said, I know Charnel God is using you to be a voice right now and to speak out to the people just like you're doing. And that's just to share these things, these truths of who we are in Christ. Cause it's, as humans, it's like we forget it. We forget it on a daily basis, I think, that happens. And it's so important to keep that focus. Thank you. Yes. And we are humans-ish. And we are, um, but we're also aliens. <laughs> so, you know, we're we're not from here. And mm -hmm. we get, uh, when, when we can remember the power of us as aliens, and this, and it's not, you know, uh, people have used the word term, you know, the term supernatural. It's not actually supernatural. It's just natural. Amen. It's all just natural. When we remember it's, it's, it's completely natural. I mean, I could give you, um, so many, so many testimonies of signs and, wonders because signs follow those who believe why is that because if you actually have the belief to be alive in it that word believe to be alive in something when you when you absolutely have every belief that god is in you everything that god is goes out of your cells into the biofield and then you start collecting because that magnet piece comes in it's not just radiating out igniting everyone that you meet but there's a magnetic thing too where god will start magnetizing things to you, whether it's a job, a partner, uh, provision of whatever kind, you know, we can actually collect things that have to do with God. We're God collectors, you know, or, or God, we, God in us radiates out and then we magnetize. So if our focus, our belief system is in line with God, then, and we're trans transforming into that alignment and we stay i am love and i stay then guess what we collect loving things love who is god and everywhere we go we're just going to collect 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 and everything you know we could say only god touches me only god sees me only god hears me only god you know feels me and make that your truth your belief to be alive in that and then that code goes out and guess what everything that comes to you is is totally god and now, does that mean you're never going to have a bad day? No, because you know what? We have the DNA of our human um, people. You know, we have genetics. Um, genetics can be carriers of certain belief system, of certain disease, different things like that. But guess what? Epigenetics is real. Mm -hmm. So when something comes up, um, that doesn't mean it's a death sentence or a prison of any kind, no matter if it's dis-ease or a belief system, that means it's just ours to fix. It's ours to, to deal with, to shift, to change. Um, and so whatever comes up, you know, the first thing to do is first of all, accept it and I identify it, you know, cool. You know, whether it's an emotion or a, a symptom and we can go, and a whole talk about the symptoms and we can talk about the emotions. So whichever one you want to go or you want to do both, 
but 86% of all physical things actually come from emotional things. So it's real important to talk about both, but, um, you know, give me a direction and we'll go. Whatever, whatever one you feel like you want to go. I'm thinking even just as far as the emotional, let's go there. Awesome. So, um, right now what I'm seeing when I'm scanning people, uh, I have biofeedback technology, which, um, you're familiar with. It basically can quantumly, um, find out what, it could measure your field and you could find out like what you're projecting in the field that would be in dissonance. And then it actually sends energies back to you to, to balance that out. And what I'm seeing a lot of is there's a lot of emotional stuff going on right now, um, which makes sense. Uh, and I can tell if it's more recent emotional stuff versus if it's something that has been in your timeline from years back. And some of it is actually what we're born into. So if your grandmother or whatever, you know, someone in your past um, was maybe had a poverty situation or they tried to do something and it didn't work multiple times. And so they just kind of were like hesitant or nervous about anything having to do with money or wealth or abundance of any kind um, that can actually be coded in the DNA. And then you're born into it. And you may not even realize that it's there or cognitively have a fear about it, but you go out and try to do things. And then the code is still there on the underlining tape. And so the code is going out. And then what comes back to you is things that don't work out, things that don't work out, things that don't work out. And when you see those patterns, whatever it is, whether it's disease, uh, partnership, betrayal, you know, whatever the situation is, like if you start seeing over and over a pattern where it's happened two or three times, you can know that there's some sort of underlying DNA issue that's sending it out, but it's fixable. So if you're like the office manager and you're in charge and one morning you come in and all the furniture is upside down, you know, you don't be like, oh gosh, this is terrible. I guess I'll just live here forever in this mess. You know, it's like, no, you're the, you're the boss. You don't need to call anyone. You don't need to ask permission. You're just going to start putting all the chairs back and putting the computer on the desk and get everything in order. That's the same thing. Like we, if we see something, we get to fix it. And um, so even with the DNA, even with the patterns. So when those things come out of order, the first thing to do is to acknowledge it. And a lot of people, when they see it happen and happen and happen, they just talk about it. And they're like, oh my God, this happens all the time. Or, oh my God, here we go again. Or cancel clear. Right. So I can give you an example of when I was um, doing a lot of itinerant ministry, we would have to, we use Delta airlines and we'd have to go through Georgia all the time. And we, <laughs> every Sunday I would get stuck in Georgia, cancel clear in, in, um, in Delta airline. I said, I'm going to start a freaking church in the Atlanta airport because I'm here every Sunday anyway. And, um, it got to be where, you know, I didn't realize it was the subconscious. I didn't, I was not awake to any of this at all at the time. I was years of this, years of posting on Facebook. Here I am again. Can you, can anyone guess where I am and say, oh, you're at the Delta airport in Atlanta. Like everyone knew my, my house, my lady who watched my animals, she would stay at the house and I'd make a call and I'd go, guess where I am? You know, what's going to, you know, I'm going to say, or I called my mom and my mom would say, there's always something, you know, and I'd, I'd walk by in the airport and I would see like Atlanta t-shirts or whatever. I'm like, you can't trick me. I don't care how cute you are on that t-shirt. I'm not buying it because I didn't want anything with Atlanta. I just had this whole like anti experience with being stuck at the airport there. And so when I realized when I started waking up to this, I was like, I'm going to use this as an experiment. I'm just going to change it up because I'm powerful. Jeez, like for real, Jesus in me, right? Holy Spirit, I have the power. So when we went, I, I realized I'm creating this because I'm talking about it. I'm feeling about it. And that code is going into the biofield. And then I'm attracting and or magnetizing it to me over and over and over again. And then when I put it on Facebook, then I have 5,000 friends who are all adding to that energy of being stuck there. And when I'm calling whoever, they're all adding and agreeing to that. Agreement is such a big deal. And so when we're using social media to come into agreement with these things, we're giving the lower vibrations uh, energy 
to, to hold the pattern, right? So I was like, oh my gosh, I created this. I can get myself out. And I've done this with physical stuff, partnership, and this. But this is one of my first little practice tests, right? So I get to Atlanta and I had to train myself. It took a lot of training because this is years and years and years of being stuck in Atlanta, cancel clear. But I had to change my mindset, my mouth my ideas. And I just was like, I love Atlanta. Oh my God. Every time I come to Atlanta, I'm out faster than everybody. I, my flights are always on time. Matter of fact, I'm early. What? Yeah. I'm always early. You know, I started with just vocalizing it, you know, you know, walking myself through that. Anytime it would barely pop up in my mind, like, Oh crap, you're going to be stuck here. Like I'd be like, Nope, Nope, Nope. I love Atlanta. And Atlanta always gets me out on time. I love Delta airlines. You know, I had to even put my body into it because I found myself going, I love Delta Airlines. And then I would catch my head saying no, which means there's disalignment in the in the pattern still in the in the consciousness. So I would say, oh, my gosh, I love Atlanta. Atlanta is amazing. I'm always out on time. Everything works. And so, um, you know, my manager called and she's like, I'm just checking on you. Do you need me to spend the night here tonight? Or, and I was like, oh, no, I'm in Atlanta. This is amazing. I'm going to be out of here just as quick as, you know, it's so-and-so time. I think I was supposed to be in at 730. And I told her, I go, it says I'll be in at 730, but I'm guessing we'll probably be a little early because you know how Atlanta is. We're always like early with Atlanta. So I'm going to guess like 720, something like that. And then I'll just got to drive home. So she's probably like, what are you talking about? But I was like, look, this is an exercise. I'm practicing. Go with it. So let's all, let's just... Anyway, guess what? I got in at 720, right? The next week, my husband was with me. It was the first time he was traveling with me in a while. And um, he was worried because he had to get back to uh, a soccer game situation and whatever, whatever. And they said on the intercom, like, um, you know, sorry, we're having problems. Da, 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 da. And he's like, oh, my gosh, she's thinking I have to be home because I have eight o'clock in the morning. All the stuff he had to be at the thing that night. I was like, no, 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 no. It's good. It's Atlanta. We're always on time. As a matter of fact, we're early. They'll figure it out. They'll, and so they were like, oh, move to so-and-so gate because they're going to do this and blah, blah, blah. So we moved around. We did all the stuff. And sure enough, I was home like 16 minutes early. You know, after several things that tried to trick me into going into that old pattern uh, with like, oh, no, we're never. And people sitting next to me going, oh, yeah, this happens to us. All, you know, all the things to try to get me in the current of that sound to bait me into that mindset. I was like, no, 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 no. We're in Atlanta, you guys. Everybody chill out. Calm down. This, I fly here all the time, and we are always early. They ended up getting us a new plane. We got out early. We were all, practically the only people on the plane. And I have, I have used this with multiple people. We've outcome mapped and like changed the outcome over and over. One lady actually got to Utah on a plane all on her own. Like nobody else was on the flight for her because she got on the flight. Now you have to be very, very specific because I had another lady who was standby and she was like, you know, I'm believing that I'm going to be on this flight standby. Da, 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 da. That's, that's my thing. And so she did, she got on the flight and then they asked her to get off because somebody else who had a paid ticket got on. She was like, I got on the flight, but I didn't outcome map that I would not just get on the flight, but I would land in Baton Rouge at whatever or wherever she was going. I think it was like Alexandria that she was landing. I was like, oh, you have to be so specific with energy because there's a code to everything. So it's not just getting on the plane. She got her answer. She got on the plane, but then she was asked to leave. So it's like, no, you got to outcome up the whole thing all the way to I landed in Baton Rouge or wherever you're landing at so-and-so time and I'm early. So that's that's one thing is discipline. That word comes from disciple. And we have to keep our mind in the mind of Christ. Of what would Christ say? What would Christ think? What would he, you know, how would he express a miracle? How would he move, you know, just with like Lazarus. Now he's just sleeping. You know, he's, you know, whatever. Or when the centurion came and they're like, oh, yeah, it's all good. You know, they're they're good. Just go home and it'll be fine. You know, it's like we got to get to that remembering our power of believing, being alive and the, the highest outcome that that we could possibly imagine. And that word 
imagine or imagination to image a nation. If we just had like a base amount of people right now that could image our nation into the mm -hmm. outcome that we really choose, we could collectively turn this whole nation around and the, the globe for that matter. But the media, the mockingbird media has got this stream of information that is locking everybody into this mindset of all the things that you kind of mentioned earlier that aren't the things that are the highest for this globe right now of uh, just low, low vibration and, and really sinking everybody in to the fear and the low vibration of that. So when we can work on the emotions, the first thing to do is just accept, you know, and I don't mean accept like this is where I'm going to be forever. I don't mean that. I mean, just acknowledge, maybe that's a better word because, um, if you had a friend who did something terrible to you and then you had to be around that person like a bunch of times, like maybe at an office party or a family reunion and, and they did something really horrific and you were really upset. And maybe you even contacted them and said, you know, when this happened, that really hurt me. I was really upset. I really like to talk to you about it. If they turn around, they're like, that was not a big deal. You need to get over it. Like, I'm not even talking to you. And like ignored you about it and then just thought they were right and just didn't care instead of being like, um, oh, you know, Deb, like I would never try to hurt your feelings. Like, I'm so sorry. That's not what I was doing. Like if they could acknowledge your body would immediately relax of just owning what they did and you feeling hurt and you feeling like, right. 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 You, I mean, I'm relaxing just saying this. Right. Um, and that's how, that's how it is energetically with ourselves. So if we are taught, don't cry, you know, I'll give you something to cry about or suppress, don't talk about it, depress, you know, suppress, depress, oppress, all those things, keep the energy down, keep the emotions down. That's the opposite of expression. It's the opposite of acknowledgement. It's the op opposite of surrender or acceptance. And so if, if you're feeling whatever you're feeling, if we can just go, you know what? I feel blank and just say, say, I, I'm, I feel sad or I feel angry and just own it for a second. I'm not saying stay there forever and call your friends and put it on Facebook. I'm just saying like, you know, your feelings could be knocking on the door going, why aren't you acknowledging me? You won't even like admit that I'm here. Like you're just depressing me still. You're just, uh, you know, you're withholding this. And it, what it does is no matter if you say it out loud or not, it still has a code. So if you're PO'd or if you're sad, but you're just going to pretend it's not there, or if you hate and you pretend it's not there, it's still there in the code. The code goes out in the biofield and you start collecting people that hate you. You collect people that are sad. You collect people that are bitter. You collect people that are whatever. And you can be like, why am I getting all these mean people in my life? It's like, well, what is it that I'm not allowing myself to acknowledge? What is it that I'm not worked out or transmuted in my own DNA projection. And so when we can just acknowledge and go, you know what? <sighs> yeah, I'm pissed off. I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm sad or whatever the thing is when we own it for just a second, then we have somewhere to go. Um, and we can actually move on. Now, again, I don't like talk therapy because uh, at most places that I've ever been a part of anything like that, talk therapy will be like, you come back every week and you just keep talking about it but there's no movement. There's no forward, like experiencing something beyond just talking about it and talking about it can actually amplify it. So I don't mean, you know, get there, talk about it, stay there. And, you know, I've literally talked to people who are still pissed off about not making cheerleader in 10th grade or whatever. It's like, seriously, you know, <laughs> so it's like, just come on. But, um, when we can at least acknowledge it, I feel sad. I feel mad. I am angry. I feel bitterness or whatever, you know, and just being honest. Then that like lets it transmutes it right away. If you have to cry, cry. Some things will not detox any other way except through tears. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I was taught don't cry. You know, I grew up military. No crying allowed, like zero tolerance for that. I think this generation is a little bit different coming up now where I was like entitled and I could feel whatever and I have opinions about everybody. And, 
you know, I'm going to put it all over social media and feel whatever, you know, I get that too. There's got to be balance. Right. So, but feeling things is a big, big deal. Um, and I'll say this. So your this is your frontal lobe and your limbic system is behind that limbic system is what helps you to deal with the emotions of the seat of your emotions. And um, as we're exposed to whatever different things that come our way, which could be betrayal or um, maybe something of an authoritative figure against you or something repetitious over and over or something like shocking or like the 10 like million things that you would never do to someone else and they do it to you. That limbic system goes, yeah, um, I'm going to defrag all the stimuli between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. And if it doesn't defrag during that time, it's usually because it's a little more sticky. It's a little more extra. It's like harder to transmute and or not really acknowledged of just like push it down, push it down. And so if we can help ourselves, like if we as things come up, if we can just be like, yep, and then just kind of breathe and maybe use some essential oils to help move things out or get in the sunshine, get on nature, you know, like journal, you know, just give yourself a chance to move through these things. Then otherwise what happens is that limbic system goes, she's not moving. She's not, she, this is going to stick and it moves it into a body part. And when that body part holds it, it could be weeks, years, months, whatever. And then when it, when it's out of its dormant stages and we never know why usually it's like a trigger happens and those triggers will make the organ start having symptoms or signals and when it has the signals a lot of times we're taught like oh cut it out here's a drug to make it stop or you know all the things to just make it go away right but um, if we could just be taught and remember signals are just a message saying it's time to let this be transmuted. It's time to come up and defrag. It's time to move it out. Um, then we can move it out. And what I like about, you know, Dr. Lucky, he's the one that told me about essential oils is basically with, with oils, you know, when you smell them, they go past the olfactory system, past that frontal lobe, right to the limbic system. And it tells the limbic system, Hey, you know what? It's time to let go. And it just starts letting these assignments go away. And to kind of move out and you know i didn't know what i was doing but i just got like a basic thing of oils and started putting it all over and was very um aware of the scriptures you know 1600 scriptures in the bible that talk about how the disciples went two by two they couldn't have a cloak they couldn't have a purse but the next two scriptures say but they went around with their oils and healed people <laughs> it's like you know luke in the bible physician was not writing prescriptions he was using like healthy things to help people. And the word thera therapy comes from therapeo, which means um, over time to make new choices and new will choices to, to move things out. Like it wasn't like always instant. The word heal in the Bible is used many, many times, but most of the time is therapeo is the word that they use for healing, which means healing over time through changing up what you're doing. Um, that's where they get like therapeutics of like, um, you know, um, what do you call those guys? Uh, what am I thinking? The guy who does all the muscle stuff and they work out your muscles and they, well, I'm, I'm having a brain fart, but, um, you know, or chiropractic or anything like that. It's just over time doing different things, you know, eating different, maybe taking some supplements or doing just using oils or whatever. But then there's only a few, I think 70 times where it was like instant miracle. So I have to go back and look at my notes, but, um, when the word heal meant instant. So we all just want this like instant, like work with everything. And most of the time God's like, it's not just instant. It's like, you got to change your ways and, you know, remember will it's time to meet will. So it's the combination of discipline. It's a combination of will It's a combination of what you eat and drink and whatever you do, do all for the glory of God, all all what is all that is all <laughs> what you think about what you talk about what you're posting you know what you're feeling what you're putting in your mouth what you're drinking you know pharma pharmaceuticals which is pharmacia which means witchcraft like are you what are you participating in you know um so we got that with the emotions uh you know me using just a few oils in 16 weeks 
I went from 24 markers on this biofeedback thing of lots of physical issues to completely getting off 30 meds, dropping 80 pounds. And I dropped from 24 markers to four markers in 16 weeks of just clearing, clearing, clearing. But um, so that is the emotion part. And then physical, you know, conscious language, you know, being really consistent in physical things. You know, you might have to do some therapeutic things, meaning, I don't know, hyperbaric chamber, uh, colonics, a raindrop. Um, you know, making sure you clean your house with good products that aren't going to be uh, messing with your hormones and, uh, and your field, you know, like cleaning supplies, like bleaches and all that kind of stuff. That is their hormone disruptors. They're cancer causing. And um, I mean, you can go all the way to pharmaceuticals and to everything else that are have side effects and things that, you know, even wearing perfume that will change the pheromones from your body to distort and go out into your field and it starts looking for a match that isn't like you at all. And so a lot of people will stop wearing their perfumes and then they're married to this girl or guy and they're just like, I don't even like you. You know, it's like, well, because you've been using something to change your pheromones to attract this person in your life. And now that isn't even a good match. So we can get mixed up, you know? So I'm just rambling at this point. How are we doing? <laughs> doing, doing? Doing good. You were saying about, about our about body and keeping things focused. You know, I just, that scripture kept going through my mind. You know, the, it's the continual renewing of our mind. You know, let this be oh, you, which is also in Christ. But there was one thing I just want to tell you really quick was when you were talking, you know, there's a story and um, I believe it was Elisha and, and the woman, her son had died. Well, when she was confronted, she said three times, she, just kept, she knew her son was dead and she kept saying, it is well, it is well, it is well. You know, and then Elisha raised her son back from the dead. I mean, you know, God was awesome what happened. So anyways, but continue, sorry, I just want to share. Yeah, that. no, and God is awesome still. God is still God. Oh, I'm gonna cry. God is still God, even in this situation where we're at. And, you know, I think a lot of people are going like, where is God, you know, and when's Jesus coming back? And I appreciate all of that. And also Jesus never left. Jesus is right in our cells. So is Holy Spirit. And I think there's a whole lot of like pressure for some outside source to come save us. And I'm, I'm not saying that God doesn't save and that Jesus doesn't save and that there aren't amazing angels and all of that for all kinds of situations. But I also think that we're sent here to occupy. We're sent here to, we're commissioned, commissioned to occupy. What does that even mean physically? That means it's time to meet Will. It's time to make some choices. It's time to hold on to our boundaries. And I mean, if someone came in your house and started taking your children, you you would stand up and you'd be like, uh, no, mm -hmm. you know, and yet all of these things are happening and then people aren't doing anything about it. And it starts with the thing the mask situation it's like you know i think that was a big test to see like what everyone would do and go like well you know we'll just try it out and we'll see if they'll listen and people are so especially christians or like so easy to comply and be like oh i don't want to be confrontational and i don't want to you know like i'll just do what i'm you know but it, it's against our civil rights it's against the constitution and you know i i get I have had to wear it um, a couple times and I went to court and they made me wear it walking in the court, which it was crazy because as soon as I walked past the little radar detector thing for make sure I wasn't carrying a weapon, then they were like, oh, you don't have to wear it anymore. And I went back in. I mean, they, well, actually, they didn't say you don't have to wear it, but they just kind of were like, I just took it off and I was like, I'm not wearing it. And nobody said anything to me. So most of the places that I go, for, for me... I feel like I'm not living my truth to, to wear it. It's like it goes against everything in my body because it's not the way God made me to cover the, the way the places where oxygen comes in my body. And um, so, I mean, I just watched something on television the other night and literally I was just trying to do it to get away from all the things that I'm doing. And the people were wearing them on TV, like driving their car. This is programming. Like you're in your car alone on television 
this is all play. And, you know, but they, if they get us to image that, mm -hmm. then the subconscious goes, oh, that's what we're supposed to do. And this is, you know, whatever, whatever. And if all the actors and actresses and the celebrities and the musicians and everyone is getting the Satan shoes and it's all like cool and, you know, whatever, then. Right. Sad. And it's, it's on purpose what they're doing. And, but we haven't got on purpose. We have gotten off track of what purpose is on this, in this journey that we're on. And, you know, in the end we win, but how do we win there? I guess people will have to get mad enough and it has to affect them personally to do anything right now. It's like, Oh, the border that's far away. You know, that's for those people to figure it's like, no, they're, they're putting those people in planes and dropping them off all over the United States right now. Mm -hmm. So what are they going to do? Set up camps at all the airports where they're dropped off. Like these people are given $2,500 on the envelope and, you know, sent, uh, I do not speak English on the envelope and they're literally dropped off at these airports. And it's like, what are they? I, mean, I feel bad for them. Not to mention the kids that are literally just being scooped up and taken doesn't seem like anybody cares. Super sad. So I don't know. I just, I have to stay in my God is the only power and presence acting here, you know, um, and then ask myself, what is my action? What is my will? What am I being called to do in this moment in time? That would make a difference for my planet here because we're here and we're creating so why not create good things while we're here? Why don't we make a difference? Why don't we commission? Why don't we commission? Why don't we live our destiny? Like if they said it was going to be biblical. This is kind of looking biblical at this point when they're, you know, cruise ships not picking up people off a of volcanic island because they don't have their stuff. You know, this is, uh, this is heinous. This is evil, you know, um, and they're just straight up on, you know, on the cover of magazines talking about blood for eternity, you know, using blood of children to, to help people have be ageless. And I mean, this is, I'm not, I could go a lot more different personal experience, but I mean, it's, it's, it's demonic. It's definitely satanic. And I think all of you guys know that. And it's the question is what are we called to do in this time? And then in this moment, and I think everyone, uh, a lot of people are just like, it'll get better. And I'm sure they'll work it out. And we're just kind of like taking a back seat and just, it's like, you know, just wait for it to be over. That's like, basically if like a hundred people surrounded your house to take you over your house and you're just like, they'll go away. It'll be over. It's like, well, or are you going to stand up for what's right and do something about it? You know, the, again, the question is, what are we called to do in this moment and in our little part of who we are and what we're called to do? And I don't know um, if you guys have any questions or how much time you have. I had about 15 minutes. I went a little bit over. I'm sorry about that. We kind of started a little bit late, though, too. So I hope this is helpful. I can't see um, your people because you're in a separate room, and I understand that, but it, I'd be curious if there's any feedback, um, if this is making any sense or helping anyone out there. But let me do this. I can, I can ask, ask everyone, that's everyone that's out there. Out there. Karen, 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 if anybody's anybody. got a question, you can come back here and ask me. We yeah. Can, you know. um, but yeah, Charnel, what you were saying while she's doing that, um, that's it. You know, it goes along with what I was actually speaking on this morning is we've all got a mission. God's got a plan for all of us. We've just got to stay in focus to hear his voice, hear what he's telling us that we're supposed to be doing. Hang on a sec. Yes. Any questions? No, I was just going to tell her feedback from the people. Oh, tell me. Yes. You want to tell her? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. I just want to say the feedback from the people from my husband and I, we're just nodding our head the whole time. Yes, awesome. yes, yes, yes. Thumbs up. Everything you're saying is confirmation to what I've been learning and growing in and, and 
awesome reminder of our what we speak, which, you know, I both my husband and I are both like sitting there going all the things that we need to change that we've gotten in the habits of saying that are negative over our yeah. for our kids, over our finances, over whatever things. And um just really appreciate what you're teaching because it really um just confirms and affirms everything God's showing me and encouraging us to do it. Do the do, do the work. God and action. What is your um what's your name? Karen. Karen. And what what's the crystal you have on? Oh um it, i don't know we're actually i just really liked it it's a rainbow rainbow quartz yeah that's a good one that's a really good one lots of frequency in the crystals and i mean that from a scientific point of view like we're often yeah. taught in the churches like crystals are so bad or whatever yeah. but the, the levites wore the crystals come on in, in their shield like why because yeah. it has power and it has high vibes and high frequency and someone who's giving service all day long, of course, they would need some extra battery energy back into their lives to be able to do what they're called to in service. So awesome. Thank well, you for your and feedback. I use essential oils also. And, oh. um, you know, you, you came to our church years ago. I was here with Pastor, and um, that was when I started. But just fighting against the whole religiousness of all that, that's, I've actually been a little nervous wearing it here at church. But I've said, no. no, I'm wearing what God created. And and there is energy and frequency in it. And I receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. So all, thank you for everything. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Bless you and your husband. Yes. If anybody else has a question, you can come back, Karen, if anybody else has anything too. But, um, you know, Sharnell, when you were saying that, and it was like, I remember it was Joanne McFadder, and we were talking one time, and she was like, you know, these people say this is new age, that's new age. She says, that's just silly because God created the crystals for us. And like you said, the ephod that the priest wore had, you know, the Urim and the Thurim was two stones that they used to be able to hear from God. I mean, that's heavy. And um, that's exciting. So thank you. There is uh, a Lemurian um, crystal that, uh, well, all of them record. Um, Crystals actually record, but the Lemurians have more record um, record keeping. They call them record keepers. And I had found one in Florida, and I was like, I knew prophetically. I was walking, and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is mine. And I don't have it with me right now, but I put it on my lap, and basically, I literally got my whole book, The Science of Miracles, within. I, I wrote the whole thing in twelve hours. Um, Awesome. The Science of Miracles. And it goes into, it says, The Science of Miracles, uh, Remembering the Frequency of Love. And it's just, it goes into the simple steps of changing your field. So you get different patterns and you actually live in miracles all the time. Because this is our destiny, is to just live the way Jesus did. If, if not greater, actually, greater things than these. And to have that as a, I mean, I had a big miracle today. A huge miracle today and i'm um, i shared it with you about this puppy I know. but uh you want me to share that real quick yes go ahead and share it yes so here's a here's an example hey shelly Beatty, um bless you so much um she's in from new zealand and she's saying hi so um i we lost our uh, one of our dogs have passed away a couple weeks ago and it's just been kind of terrible it's a german shepherd and uh my it was my dad's really my dad's dog my dad like this dog followed him everywhere and just was his pal i mean they were besties and so he's just been going through you know all the things when he had a dog for 10 years and it passes it's just like their family right so um but saturday last saturday um i was driving because we were talking about maybe getting a dog for him for easter and i had found a bunch online and you know i also have two german shepherds and I was actually in my mind going, you know what? I have one that's about a year old. She's got about uh, a lot of money in her as far as training. So she could do like everything. And that way he wouldn't have to fool with starting over with a puppy. Although he really knows how to train dogs. He's been training dogs. And um, we've always had German Shepherds. My my uncle was canine MP. And my grandfather had German Shepherds. So we've always been a German Shepherd 
um, family and we, we train our dogs. And so uh, I thought, well, this one will all be ready. I have to do the puppy stuff and start over and blah, blah. And I, I was I, actually willing to give up my own beautiful dog. I mean, they're just up the street. So it's not like I wouldn't see it every day, but I had that thought like, well, maybe, maybe this is supposed to be for them and you know, whatever. And well, I was driving down having this conversation in my head. And then all of a sudden I could tell you exactly where I was on this street. It was right in front of this crawfish boil place. I hear in my head, a little clip of a song that I don't recognize. And I'm like, I'm hearing it over and over. I was like, what is this song from? What is the song from? And this is how we get information. I'm going to do a whole workshop on signs, wonders, and um, and tapping into um, the cloud of witnesses. And this is something that I'm going to teach on some things I've never taught on out loud before um, to anyone in public. But this is kind of, this is a workshop I'm doing coming up. But we, um, I, I heard this couple of phrases that I knew was a song and I even got the tune. And so I like pull over the gas station and I Google and the, the, the song comes up in the YouTube and it's like in, in YouTube. And it was a song from a movie in the Broadway show, Annie. And um, the song was called maybe. And the part that I had heard was only the last bit of line and says, um, so maybe now this prayer uh, maybe now this prayer is the last one of its kind. Won't you please come get your baby? And then it says, maybe. And the the context of the song is Annie is an orphan in this orphanage. And there's all these kids around and they're half asleep, you know, whatever. But she's up thinking about how I wonder where my parents are. Like maybe one day they'll come get me and like what, how, what are they going to be like? And, you know, maybe they're rich, maybe they're poor, you know, all these things of like this, this little kid who's like wanting to be adopted and she's all alone and an orphan. And, um, but, and then she says, you know, please, you know, calling out this prayer, like, please come get me. And then she says, maybe like, also a little bit discouraged and like de desperate and like, Oh, maybe they won't, you know, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't, but here's a prayer. And I call my mom and I go, mom, I don't know. You know how I get stuff. I said, I think that you're not supposed to get any of these dogs we talked about. I don't think you're supposed to get my dog because my dog has parents. I said, I just had this thing happen. I sent her the clip. I said, you know how I get things. I said, I think that your dog is already born. And it's alone, it's an orphan, and that you're going to adopt it, just like Annie. I thought I think I don't know how I just call me crazy, but I'm telling you, I think your dog is already sending a prayer out for you. And I work at a shelter. Uh, I, um, I do all the things that I do, but I work at two different shelters too, as an ND and a foster mom. So I actually called the director of one of the shelters, and they never have puppies. They usually get like dogs that are dumped off and very, very rarely ever get puppies. So I had called to say, do you have any German shepherds that has, someone has turned in or surrendered or whatever? Cause every now and then you'll get like a, a dog. And she was like, no, I don't. And I told her what happened with, with, um, my mom's dog. Well, this morning I had another lady I've been working with, with the C word. And we've been working um, back and forth. And she contacted me this morning to let me know that her German shepherd had passed. And it, I was like, oh, my gosh. And it just, you know, she was saying, oh, I know it's just the dog and everything. I was like, no, it's a big deal, you know. And I don't know why, but I felt prompted, like, go to the Denver Springs Animal Shelter, um, like, Facebook page. And I just go right then while I'm talking to her. And there is a German shepherd puppy. That's about 11 weeks old. It's a girl. They wanted a girl. And it says that she was dro dropped off or, or dumped um, that morning, today, like hours. And, and Rachel, so I call Rachel, the director. I'm like, oh, my God, what's the story on this dog? I'm coming right now. She was like, come right now. And, and that's why I called you. And I'm like. I got to go to the shelter. I got to check this out. I think we just, I think our dog showed up. But uh, I was like, oh, can I foster it? Or what are we doing or whatever? So I bring my mom over there and she just cried. 
And my dad was like, maybe this is our dog. Maybe it's destiny. And so uh, this is, we're getting the dog. Uh, we have to wait 10 days, but we're, we're adopting this dog. So this is like, you know, I could give you a million of these stories. And I work with people all day long to remember how they can have miracles, whether it's financial, a car, a house, a partner, uh, you know, a wife, a husband. I've got like eight people that I've connected with their wives or husbands now and they're married happily and uh yeah this when we tap into what we're doing and why we're here and who is in us like you can actually practice until things just pop in and it's like just normal to have regular miracles all the time so anytime someone buys the book i'm like well do me a favor and report your miracles to me because i'm going to expect that anyone who reads this is going to apply it and have the automatic miracles that are happening on, on just instantly. So um, anyway, do you have well, any questions? I ordered the book and I'm reading it. So I will definitely be reporting. And I just had a young lady from the church just walk into me and she said, she was asking me, how did you lose the weight that you had lost? Okay. So after 16 weeks of using the oils, I just got that basic kit. Um, I did not have, I did not have any knowledge that I would lose weight over that. That was not the goal. That was not anything even in my mind that would happen. But when you deal with trauma, so I had 24 markers of trauma. Uh, I didn't know how many were dormant, how many were active. I just knew that trauma equals dis-ease and had the physical symptoms. So um, when I got that basic kit, I just started putting it on my body, main arteries, wrists, feet, um, you know, the, the pores are most open on your hands and your feet, which biblically, you know, where did they apply with their hands, obviously, but they remembered Jesus had it on his feet. Like, so, um, just following the biblical thing here, there's a book called healing oils of the Bible yes. that I kind of used as my guideline of, you know, finding all the scriptures because the Bible is full of the scriptures that talk about it, but they don't say, and this is what you do because, you know, like right now in modern day, if I said, hey, Deb, go get an aspirin, which I would never say. But I'm saying if, if you said that to someone, people won't go, oh, my God, what's an aspirin? How do you take it? What do you mean take it? What, what do you, right. you, know, you know, everyone just knows. Right. So when the Bible was written and they talk about myrrh or frankincense or whatever, everyone's not like, can you explain and elaborate on that? They don't need to write it all down because everybody's like, oh, yeah, frankincense. OK, we got that. So. But, but yeah, when I just basically put it on my feet, I diffused it. I, you know, put it on the main arteries over 16 weeks of just being very intentional. Uh, not only did I stop having the physical symptoms, but one day I get up, I'm like, my pants were kind of loose. And then it was like looser and looser. And so I went and bought new clothes. And then I wish that I wouldn't have bought clothes yet because I went from size 22 to a four in 16 weeks. When we hold on the trauma, we hold on to weight too. We hold on to pounds. We hold on to everything because your body is like, oh, and it stores and it holds on because it's like I got in its protection to protect your physical body. So when you start letting go of all those things and your body is like, oh, I feel good. I remember I'm strong. I'm healthy. I don't need to be in the defense victim role anymore. I'm the victor. Then you just shed it. And, um, I did gain probably like 25 back with getting married and just, you know, having a little extra carbs here and there. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very, I feel good and I'm healthy and I've seen this happen over and over with everybody. Like, it's just like you do this and you're going to get that because this equals that and there's formulas to it. So yeah, that using the oils helps. That helped a lot. Yes. Thank you. Did that? Yeah. Awesome. She increased with some carbs. Oh, did she do a low carb? So I, I have since then because of the, the, I had a, another health situation that happened. I did go keto um, to starve out, whether it's fungus or mold or parasites or the C word, all of those things um, feed off of carbs. So I'm a big fan of keto. Um, for all those reasons and I'd have a book on keto actually and uh, we have like a membership um, 
Yes. This has 31 chapters, one for every day, just to reprogram. I wanted it to be a very action, call to action type learning thing, because I think if people know why they're doing it, then they have a tendency to stick with it a little bit more if they understand the reasons behind it. And then we have a private group where people are all in there learning together and just posting recipes and there's 31 videos. So it's one per chapter. You don't have to have the book to be in the group, but um, you just watch a video every day for 30 days just because it takes 21 days to make a new habit. We went a little longer because I had more information. I'm like, let's just keep adding some. But um, but yeah, keto is a big part of um, why we can be healthy too for me. Thank you. That's awesome because that is helpful too for everyone. So I so appreciate everything that you're sharing so much. And even just the feedback that I'm getting from everyone. So thank you. Yes, awesome. Extremely, so extremely helpful. You guys have a very, very blessed day. And I hope if, if you guys um, are on Facebook, maybe you'll send me a messenger or something. Because I'm very huggy. If I was there, I would hug all of you. I'm praying for all of you individually. And um, do more of... Uh, I like to do like the prophetic parts of all that and um, read the field and like move into some of that. And maybe that's something we can do another day. But um, but yeah, hopefully this gives some good foundation of empowering and igniting the remembering of God in you. Um, and um, in the meantime, if you guys do want to connect, you can find me on Facebook and we do things like the biofeedback. I do personal coaching um, and you know, lots of different things. We have memberships for different classes, but whatever, whatever floats your boat and whatever is required for you at the time. And, and again, I would hug all of you. So just pretend I'm hugging every one of you. And if this did help you in any way, I always love if you could send a, li a little message and I could see your faces at least to connect with you in the field and be like, I'm sending you love, I'm sending you love. And I can actually see who I'm sending it to. Uh, I know we can do a remote, but I like seeing faces too. So I just wish I was there. I My mom was we... like, you're going to Michigan? And I'm like, yes, in a weird way. I'm going to Michigan. <laughs> going to Michigan. Well, so you have an open invitation anytime to come here too in person. You know that. So thank you. Awesome. Well, I love every one of you. I thank you so much. And um, look forward to when I do come up there and meet you in person. And I'm just so thankful for you, Deb. Um, I love your heart, your purity. Mm. I love your, mm, I'm going to cry. Just such, such a um, beautiful soul. And everyone is so lucky to have you in that area. And you guys are just so blessed to be able to have such a woman that is just strong and fierce, but also has tapped into this, like just enormous, pure love, just this selfless, beautiful love that you are. And, It's such an honor to co mission with you and just to be a part of your life and what you do for so many people. And just, oh God, it's always good to have to meet someone with such integrity and love, and just pure love for people to see the best in everyone and, and to help so many people. I mean, you're in the church or out of the church, you know, you are, you get the whole idea, you really understand your role and who you are. And it's just, I love that you're so open to, to, to the truth and, and to growing. And, you know, some people are just like, this is where I am. And, nah, and, you know, you're, you're just, you're just beautiful, beautiful inside and out. And I'll just thank you. I'm so, so blessed to know you. And I am so blessed to know you and everything that you are doing and everything that God is going to begin to do even stronger through you. So thank you for taking, I know you've got so much going on in your busy schedule. So I'm just, I'm so appreciative for you taking this time today, and meeting with us today from the bottom of my heart, Charnel. You've done so much for so many people in your books and the bio feed and everything that you do to help. I mean, you've helped me so much. So I'm so grateful from the bottom of my heart. Bless oh. you. Thank you. Well, I will be in touch and you keep me posted on how things are going and report you guys as miracles. What I'm seeing more than anything is you and your church mm. completely walking in all of who God is in each one of you. 
and you all seeing miracles everywhere you go, igniting Christ everywhere you go, igniting miracles everywhere you go, and being God who is love, being love everywhere you go and igniting love and everyone you contact. That's what I'm seeing for not just you guys, but everyone who can hear this, everyone who's watching, everyone who's listening to be able to remember the power of love within us. This is our inheritance. And I see you guys doing that. Please do report your miracles to me. We will. All right. Thank you. Y'all have a beautiful week. Talk soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.